so once again, we return to this particular picture right here. Picture of His Imperial Majesty on the steps of of Capitol, the United States Capitol, Capitol Hill during his 1954 visit to America, to the United States of America. You can see this historic image right here. Now, this particular um, book, um, the 50th anniversary of His Imperial Majesty, Haile Selassie I, his first visit to the United States in 1954 and this was written for the 50th anniversary um, and this particular copy I have signed by the author Ross Nathaniel on the 74th coronation anniversary and in this particular book which is a, a very a very um, important historical documentation of the visit of his imperial majesty to the United States of America on page 11. Let me show you this page 11. It has an article from the Ethiopian Herald, number 48, volume 11, Saturday, May 22nd, 1954. And you can see this article right here. This is the article. Right? This is the particular article. And as you can see, the particular article is speaking about the whole segregation, school debate, so forth and so on. And the author, or the writer of this, Ross Nathaniel, he gives a, a, a brief um, editorial here. And on page 11, it says this, and I would like to share this, especially in light of uh, MLK and his lying dream, the CNN documentary, Words That Change the Nation, um, Dorothy Cotton Pick and Negro, um, her testimony of this very blonde and blue-eyed woman who is the original um, author, in that sense, of this so-called dream that would mosey its way into King's mouth and become the quintessential theme for Negroes in America and for America over the past 40 years, over the past 40 years. And people believe this is a dream, but really we can see 40 years later that things are not really better for, for, for niggers in America, but really the situation is much bitter, much bitter. And there's evil that's on the horizon because true change has not occurred. It's all been virtually cosmetic, large in part. But here it says U.S. Supreme Court decision to desegregate schools. Seven days prior to His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie's arrival in the United States, the U.S. Supreme Court decided to end segregation in education. The U.S. Supreme Court decision of May 17, 1954, is seen by the Rastafari family as directly related to His Imperial Majesty's visit. His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie was not only King of Kings, of Ethiopia. He was also Minister of Education. And the fact that this royal black king to whom the U.S. had to pay homage was coming to the United States of America, where schools were segregated under, quote, Jim Crow, and quote, racial discrimination would have proven a colossal embarrassment, embarrassment to the U.S., to the United Snakes, I mean states. Therefore, Selezi, in order to show Nagusa Negesa the king of kings of Ethiopia, that the U.S. was making progress in granting equal rights to all without regard to race or seed, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in favor of desegregation in the Brown versus Board of Education case just seven days, 
just seven days, brothers and sisters, just seven days prior to His Majesty's arrival for the first time, we might add, in the U.S., the United Snakes of America. That's very interesting, brothers and sisters. That's, that's very interesting. How come this, this half of black history, this part of the black story, globally and particularly for us in the Americacas, how come it hasn't been told? How come it has been suppressed all this time? The connection between these, that's a whole conspiracy theory we can, you know, we can see in that. This is a conspiracy, a conspiracy. But the fact still remains that seven days prior to his Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie's arrival in the United States, the U.S. Supreme Court decided, do you think that this arrival of Moa Ambesa, the Imma Negeda, Yehuda, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, do you think that had anything to do with the Supreme Court decision, the U.S. Supreme Court's decision? No doubt. No doubt whatsoever. But they decided then, seven days, it reminds me of uh, the um, uh, Tupac. You remember Tupac? You remember Tupac. You know who Tupac is, right? You remember Tupac? He did that song about seven days, seven days. You know, the seven days, the whole Subae was known as a week. You understand? Seven days prior. Because imagine His Imperial Majesty, who was Minister of Education, the Ministry of Education and Fine Arts, we might add, education and fine arts being one. We can see the damage that it has caused now being divided. In fact, um, who is it? Winston Marsalis. He's been speaking about that a lot, how how fine arts is and should be considered a part of education and, and he's he's going on the record and seeking to even in a sense campaign for that recognition and bringing that together like how in most homes there was some sort of musical instrument and how how the learning of art is so important the connection of art with education but his imperial majesty being the minister of education and fine arts this royal black king of kings of Ethiopia, 3,000-year-old uh, dynasty, to whom the United States had to pay homage and respect, was coming to the United States of America, where schools at that time, just seven days prior to his visit. So we know that they had to do this, or they thought that they should do this, to prevent them a, a colossal embarrassment. But it's not something that they willingly wanted to do. They did this all cosmetically. But most black folks, most Negroes, believe that this this um, Brown versus Board of Education decision was actually some sign that the you know the old snake, that white supremacy, that slick Willie Lynchism had changed. But, but it, it was no change. And many of us now, 40 years later, can testify it, it was not a change. And a lot of the civil rights folks, the Mar 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 Martin Luther King uh, Jr. people, even Tavis Smiley and some of them are scratching their proverbial nigger, n nigger naps, wondering, like, what happened? What happened? Well, the half of the story wasn't told to you. That's what happened, you know? The truth has finally come to life. Now, something else, I mean, there's a lot of interesting things in this particular um, document, this particular document here. Um, here, His Majesty, uh, His Majesty gives um, a speech, um, and he also spoke about um, the connection and relationship between the African Americans and, and their long standing, those Ethiopianists among the African Americans, long standing 
um, recognition and relationship with Ethiopia, how how old and how long it goes in the brotherhood between Ethiopians at home and Ethiopian abroad. That was another fulfillment of Amos 9 and 7, where it says, Aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians to me, O children of Israel, saith the Lord? Saith the Lord? Um, he meets with... Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Eisenhower. You remember Mr. and Mrs. Eisenhower? Or do you remember Eisenhower? Now, it's something interesting here that we want to share with you concerning um, concerning uh, what Eisenhower said. Um, His Imperial Majesty also spoke, uh, addressed the joint session of the American Congress. And you can see that in this particular historical photo right here. Let us show you this, where he, where, where it's His Majesty there, who's addressing the, the joint session, the joint session of Congress, in that particular photo, right there, and the the um, transcript of the speech is here, as well. Is there as well? Um, I see some stuff about education he's mentioning here as well. But let's just move forward to this part about um, his, his another shot right here where His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie addresses joint session of Congress. And you can see them. You can see Nixon on the side right there. That's His Imperial Majesty right there. All right. That's 1954. Remember, all this is... See, when we look at the historical record of black people in America and uh, civil rights, we have to look at the big picture. You see, the big picture was not being shown. The big picture was suppressed for all these years. The half of the story was not told. Let's let's go to what Eisenhower Eisenhower. Um, said, uh, there's, some, there's some very interesting photos in this, <laughs> I must say once again, you know, um, especially from the newspapers and what they said in the newspapers. And then, for the past 40 to 50 years, they've sought to erase the memory of Haile Selassie from the hearts and the minds of not only black people, but it's like we've been brainwashed. You understand? Brainwashed um, for the past 50, 50 or more, 50 or more years. Let's get that newspaper article right here. Line of Judah conquers the Windy City. Um, and the statements he makes on, on our people here in the Americas and the connection and the relationship as well. Um, And how he becomes a persona non grata. That's that's the height of the Freemasonic uh, white supremacy conspiracy right there. But here's what we're talking about. Selassie educates Ike during Washington tour. Let's get that cover again. Selassie educates Ike. You know, Ike, Ike is the one who is reading that speech about cautioning uh, America about the pernicious influence of the military industrial complex you you would call that no doubt that's been popularized especially since the bush administration's um invasion of uh invasion of iraq and the whole thing that went on for the last like a nine or so years here this is from chicago defender june 1954 so please listen up listen up washington dc the NAAPA. President Eisenhower told his press conference Wednesday that he received from Haile Selassie I, or Haile Selassie I, Emperor of Ethiopia, a very elementary education which he should have had before. So the same president that we see in, in the suppressed, one suppressed but now revealed, um, um, that was his, his going out of office word to the nation where he talked about the military-industrial complex and perhaps we would add that 
to this particular, to the long version of this lecture, so one can have that as well. That president says that he received from Haile Selassie I, Emperor of Ethiopia, a very elementary education which he should have had before, which he should have had before. Mr. Eisenhower made his statement when he was asked if he cared to comment upon the emperor's visit. He would say this. Not only did he have a very interesting visit with the emperor, but a very enlightening one, Mr. Eisenhower replied, or we should say very illuminating. Among other things, he said, the emperor brought along an industrial map of Ethiopia, of Ethiopia, showing the industries of various sections, and also brought him a few products of his country. Mr. Eisenhower said he was ashamed to say that the emperor had given him some very elementary education he should have had before. Hmm. He described the emperor as a charming individual and said the people with him were interesting and knew their business and knew their business. That was the, the honorable Ethiopian generation opposed to this careless one today. Last mini paragraph, he is certain that in Ethiopia, Mr. Eisenhower declared, there is a deep underlying appreciation of America's efforts and affection for the people. But you see, when we read that, that's very good that that, that was said even then and that this brother, Ross and Fan, you compiled it in this particular book right here that if you can, you should get a copy of. And if we can make available, we will make available as well this particular book right here concerning His Imperial Majesty's visit to the United States of America. But then when we go into a little bit more in detail and, and that speech... That, 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 that speech that Eisenhower would give is really, really so interesting. Have you seen that particular speech? You need to check it out. 